The first edition of The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith, published in London in 1776. I'm Adam Douglas of Peter Harrington, and I'd like to show this copy to you. Uh, 1776 was a, a momentous year for uh, more than one reason, but it was a fantastic year for publishing. The same year as Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations, the first volume of Edward Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire was published by the same publisher, indeed. Very good year. And here's the first edition title page. The full title of it, of course, we now, it's so familiar to us, we just refer to it as The Wealth of Nations, but it's an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. And Adam Smith's title there, he's already well known, he published his Treatise of Moral Sentiments. And uh, this was a book that was uh, being anticipated for some time. Uh, there had been several economic writers in the 18th century who'd attempted something like this, but Adam Smith was the first person to fully achieve a complete economic system, a description of uh, modern economics, if you like. It's the foundational text of classic economic theory. Um, it's printed in this large quarto format so that uh, it's appropriate for a, a thesis of this uh, weight and uh, gravity, and uh, that makes it easy to read, pleasant to handle, a uh, nice large typeface, and uh, it's all elegantly laid out, um, rather like Gibbon's Decline and Fall, actually. It's, it's a very similar book in that respect. But it's in two volumes. This copy is in a particularly pleasing, unrestored binding. This is the original leather binding, it's calf, it's a, a plain tan calf, which you can see there, and there's not much decoration gone on, it's sort of inappropriate to make this a, a very pretty book, but the, uh, there's a little bit of gilt tooling in the 18th century manner on the numbering piece here, and a little bit around the lettering piece there, these red and green labels, the contrasting labels, a very nice style. Um, there's nothing else fancy about it. There's no decorative end papers. They're just plain end papers, and the edges dyed a workmanlike red. But this kind of copy, without restoration, is uh, very desirable. Um, a lot of copies of these large leather books from this date would break at the joints and have to be uh, restored or rebacked. But this is really a handsome copy in contemporary condition. There's a full description of this copy on the Peter Harrington website where you can find contact details if you'd like to talk to us about this book or indeed any others of our economics books.